All right, so let's get started. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Oh, yes, fine. Okay, all right, awesome. Um, so the topic that we are going to discuss today is knob and tube and uh, aluminum wiring. Um, so we will discuss them individually, first the knob and tube and then the aluminum. And uh, we'll, I will try not to go into technical details because I don't want you to get bored. Uh, but we will look at uh, these issues from the, from the consumer's perspective and from the real estate perspective. So that's, that's more important. Uh, let me start uh, with uh, with a little bit about Fillet Post. Most of you already know about me and about Fillet Post. So just uh, quickly, um, we are in business for over 20 years. Uh, we have inspected over $40 billion worth of real estate in 2017. And that this number just came yesterday. So, uh, and uh, we have also completed over 2.5 million home inspections and that's system wide. Uh, with uh, over 500 franchisees. Uh, one of the key feature with Fillet Post is that there is no waiting time. You get the inspection report uh, right there and there. And that's me. Um, I'm the franchise owner for Fillet Post. And the goals and outcomes, so it also mentioned on uh, one of these uh, sheets that you have uh, in front of you. So these are the things that we are going to cover today. Uh, we are going to talk about different type of uh, electric wiring. Uh, we are going to dig a little bit into the history of uh, wiring uh, different types, uh, which one of them is safe, which one is, uh, you know, um, um, uh, what are the insurance consequences of them, and uh, what are some of the dis disadvantages of uh, different uh, 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 systems. Uh, obviously, we are going to discuss uh, I, I will try to touch base on uh, on the cost of upgrade and uh, replacement or maintenance. So uh, typically in a, in a residential setting, we have um, knob and tube systems. Uh, we'll go into the detail about that. We have aluminum wiring system. There's a combination of aluminum and copper. Uh, why that is dangerous, we'll talk about that as well. Um, the, the, the copper wiring system is probably the best system that is available out there. And uh, in about 70% of the homes uh, in and around this area have a uh, copper wiring system. So that is, uh, that is the new norm. That is what uh, uh, most of the new constructions have. Uh, different amperage are 60, 120. 60 is usually with the knob and tube and in some copper wiring, I've also seen 60. But um, mostly in the subdivision homes, it's either 100 or 200. Uh, so knob and tube wiring. It's an old system, uh, and that was a standardized method of electrical wiring. Um, it's a, if, if you ever happen to see a century home, you are more than likely to see a knob and tube wiring in there. Uh, that may have been upgraded to a copper wiring and, and, a, and a, a breaker panel. But it doesn't mean that. Uh, um, uh, but but there are there are a lot of things to look for, uh, especially when you go into a century home. Uh, so this wiring system is basically made up of uh, two parallel wires, uh, open wires, uh, hot and neutral, uh, and they supply electricity to different areas of the house. Uh, some of the issues with that uh, wiring system is that number one, they do not have ground cable, so there is no grounding, uh, which obviously is a problem. And then that system does not support modern uh, appliances. So if you have TV, uh, like the new flat screen TVs, or printers, or some of the other modern appliances, uh, this uh, system is more than, well, this system is not going to support that. So any anything that has a grounding cable will not work with this system. So if you see a uh, the switch or the uh, what do you call something that you plug into the receptacle, so if it has three uh, three prongs, then it's not going to work. If it has two prongs, or if for uh, somehow if you could get rid of the grounding cable and plug in two prongs, yes, it would work, but it's risky. All right, so these are some of the examples uh, you can see actually over here. 
these are uh, the knobs and these are the tubes. Uh, knob is basically, um, a, you know, it takes the wire along the length of the, uh, the floor joist, whereas the tubes basically cut through the joist and take the wire to the next segment. And that's how they are all wide, usually in the basement. And if you go into a century home and it has an unfinished basement, you would see something like this. This is a knob and tube wiring, a typical example in an industrial setting. So this is basically a farmhouse. And uh, even now, knob and tube wiring is very common in farmhouses, uh, uh, big sheds because this is very cheap to do. That's why they do it. And it's very easy to, you know, maintain as well. Yeah. So what's the maximum uh, for a dollar? 60, 60, usually 60. 60. Um, I haven't seen any hundred. So it's, it's usually 60. Okay, so this is another example. So like I was saying that uh, these are the knobs, they connect the wires, and then these are the tubes that goes through the floor joists. <laughs> And then they go and, you know, that's how they supply uh, electricity to the whole house. This is a hot wire. This is a neutral wire. And this is the connection. So it was a very simple system. It was very um, easy uh, to maintain. But it was back in those days when there wasn't much requirement of power. It was usually just one receptacle per room. Now, these are some of the problems that can happen with uh, with this wiring. So over here, you can see uh, scorching. You can see live wire exposed. The insulation is being eaten by rodent or whatever. But this has been, the, the wire is exposed. And if somebody touches it, you know what's going to happen. OK, so yeah, this is another example. So somebody has tried to use the tape to cover uh, the live fire, which is never a good idea to do because this can trigger fire right away. Yeah. But some tapes, the yeah, electrical tape. Electrical tape is different. You can use electrical tape, okay. but it's not recommended. Plus, it's only the electrician work, to, the electrician's job to do uh, to use the electrical tape. Okay. But if you use the plastic tape or the duct tape, no, absolutely not. All right, so a little bit about the history of knob and tube. It was uh, used between uh, 1980 and 1930, and it was discontinued in 1950. So that is usually the, the, the time frame. If you see a house, if you go into a house which, is, which was built in 1930s or 40s or 20s, you would see a knob and tube wiring. You can go into the basement and you can see those knobs and tubes hanging around. Uh, even if the house has been upgraded to a breaker panel and uh, aluminum wiring, still you would see some knobs and tubes because they are embedded into the floor joists, so they are easy to see. But uh, if you see that situation, then obviously you know that the house has been upgraded and you can get the certificate and you know all those, uh, all those things. It is uh, only permitted in certain industrial and agricultural settings. Uh, um, they are, the, yeah, it's very difficult. It's very expensive system to maintain. So those ceramic knobs and tubes, they are very expensive. And uh, that's why they, they were phased out and they are not in use anymore. Uh, and obviously the competitive products, they were very readily available and uh, they were very cheap to maintain and install. Plus electricians prefer to have something which is safe. So some of the disadvantages of the system, uh, they do not have safety ground, the, the grounding cable. Uh, can uh, da get damaged during the building renovations. Uh, yeah, so one big thing is the insulation. So it was a asphalt saturated flexible insulation that was used to insulate those wires. And that can you know dry over time. Uh, and, uh, and the live wire can get exposed. Remember the picture that I showed you? The wire was exposed in that. <clears throat> it gets damaged by rodents, so that's another issue. And uh, like I said, the modern appliances, like the computers, the TVs, the printers, uh, they're not supported by this system. 
<clears throat> yeah, the old homes have their own charms, but they have their limitations as well. <laughs> Some of the other disadvantages are uh, there are only few circuit uh, uh, branch circuit uh, uh, that needed. So if you go to old homes, you would only see one receptacle per room. Uh, usually you will, uh, you, uh, but now in the modern homes, you see like 10 receptacles in one room because you need more power. You need power on every, on almost every corner. You have your uh, cell phones to charge, you have your printers, you have computers, you have, you know, whatnot. Um, one of the things that uh, is probably the biggest disadvantage is the magnetic field that it creates inside the house. So the live wire, which is going, it is not covered with, if it is not covered properly with, uh, with the insulation, then it can create a magnetic field, which is not good for our head. Okay. Uh, a lot of people talk about these magnetic, electromagnetic fields, especially uh, if their homes are located where they're there's a live wires, like heavy duty wires going in the backyard. A lot of people ask me these questions that, uh, you know, if those wires have any 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 issues or if there is any health consequences uh, of those magnetic fields. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is something that you have in your house. So yeah, it has direct consequences. It is a fire hazard, especially near the foam and uh, blown in insulation. So that's the issue that we see today. Uh, uh, the insulation is usually blown in. And if you have a uh, knob and tube wiring running through your attic, then uh, that can trigger a fire. It's a, it's a fire hazard. Now, these are some more examples uh, of knob and tube wiring. Uh, now, this is discontinued. So you can see that the knobs are there, but there is no wire because they have upgraded the system. So these are the new wire, new junction boxes. So these old knobs are just left there. I don't know why, but they are just left into the house. Uh, but you could see that the uh, that it has been upgraded. Now this is an example of an old uh, knob and tube junction box that is very near to be burnt out, and there's a lot of tape and there's a lot of issues in here. <clears throat> uh, this is what I was talking about when you have um, blown in insulation in the attic and you have live wires running through it, this is a disaster waiting to happen. Is it asbestos? No. It's a, it's a blown in fiberglass insulation. Loose insulation. All right. Uh, any question? Uh, let's dig into the cost of uh, replacement. Um, it's usually around ten to fifteen thousand dollars for two thousand square feet home. Uh, the century homes are usually bigger, so the cost usually runs into twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollars, and that is the replacement of the whole system from knob and tube to aluminum wiring. So they basically run new wires. Uh, they have to install new panel. And obviously the branch circuit wiring is something that they also have to do because of the new wiring. So is it included for disposal of the old system or only replacement? It's just a replacement. Yeah, uh, something uh, about the upgrade and maintenance. So sometimes I have seen in some homes that uh, what people do, they they basically leave the knob and tube as is, and they add a layer of uh, aluminum wiring on top of it. So some of the bedrooms, for example, will get aluminum wiring, while the basement still have knob and tube. So that's like an overlap of different systems. Now that is very dangerous to do because these systems usually do not sink. So that is, uh, if people think that they have a partial upgrade to a new system, but that's really not the case. It's the, it's the bottleneck is still the normal tube system that you have uh, in the house. So if you are replacing, you have to replace the whole system. You should not do it in patches. 
And uh, as a realtor, if you go into a house and you see fires that are going through the, the floor twice, and you see a new panel and you see a new uh, wires as well, well, the first thing that should come to your mind is, is it a tool system overlap? Because that is usually dangerous. But if it has been removed properly and the new system has been put in place and the old wires have been taken off, then it's, that's, a, that's a acceptable uh, system. Yes. Would someone ever replace the old system and leave the wiring there? Like not connect it, but actually just leave the wire? Yes. So back to his point, that's the disposal of the old uh, wires is usually costly. So that's why they would just leave it there. Oh, okay. I've seen that. Yes, I have seen that too. So if I go into a home that has those wires, I make sure that I test those wires with my, you know, tools that well, I, I have. see they were cut, like they weren't connected to me. Just still, there, there is a possibility that one yeah. of them is left connected. Yeah. So, you know, so it's, so a better option is to, you know, get it inspected thoroughly, either by an inspector or to an uh, electrician to make sure that there is uh, no, uh, you know, issues in there. Right, uh, insurance is usually very costly, and uh, some companies do not ins uh, insure at all. It makes sense. Uh, so yeah, summary about uh, knob and tube wiring is an uh, absolute system. It's uh, very costly to maintain, expensive to replace, uh, overloading can uh, can cause system uh, to fail, and obviously can cause fire as well. And obviously, this is of support. Uh, the modern uh, lifestyle. Um, how many of you have ever come across something to you said you have, you have, yeah? Downtown, there's like more. Downtown, yeah, yeah exactly. Anyone that's worked downtown, yeah, exactly. that's one thing you have to be careful. Yeah. Well, I have, um, I have um, quite a few of them actually up north as well. So the old homes, like the century homes, okay. we have almost all of them have not a few barriers. Okay. Since we are on time, let's dig into the aluminum wiring. Okay, so this is also an old system, but it is, but it continue, uh, um, it's still in use. Uh, you can still find aluminum wiring in many homes. Um, so basically, this system is consists of aluminum wires and aluminum conductors. Uh, they were uh, they are made up of uh, three wires. So there's a hot, there is a neutral, and then there is a ground cable. So it is obviously a better system. And uh, <clears throat> the aluminum wires basically supplies uh, the electricity throughout the house. Now, like I said, this system is better than knob and tube because it has a grounding cable, and it uh, does supports the modern appliances. However, this system also has a lot of limitations. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's <clears throat> dig into the history a little bit because we need to understand why this was put in place at the first place. So, back in 1960s and 70s, this is a system that was used uh, in that time. Um, and the reason for aluminum wiring was because copper was expensive. Now, can you think of a reason why copper was expensive in 1960 and 1970? Because they can hold the copper. No, because yes. US was bombing. Because they were bombing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the oh, copper yeah. was used for military. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so that was the time when, uh, when they started using the aluminum. Uh, from from back in days, like from early uh, 1900s, all the electricians agree. Well, it's it's a proven fact that copper is a much better conductor of electricity than aluminum. But they had to replace it to some something because copper was very expensive. So aluminum came out as a very nice alternative. Uh, uh, and they there were there were a few issues. For example, they had to use a bigger <coughs> gauge wires. So instead of using a 14 gauge wire, they have to use 12 or 10. Oh, by the way, 12 and 10 is a bigger gauge than 14. It's the other way around, and uh, yeah, it's gauges. And uh, so, so they were trying to get the same effectiveness out of the out of a higher gauge wire. Uh, 
uh, <clears throat> it is still in use, but it's permitted with the appropriate installation and methods and materials. So this is very important. And this is what we are going to talk about uh, today. Uh, what are the installation methods that we have to follow and what are the materials that have to be used in the aluminum wiring? Uh, because there are consequences. Uh, if they are not done properly, then obviously there are a lot of consequences, insurance, cost, a few other things that we are going to discuss. A couple of other points, aluminum over time became expensive, so we don't use that anymore. Uh, well, sometimes we do, especially in the commercial settings, because uh, if you have to transport electricity from point A to point B, and point A and point B are far from each other, like uh, like the like the electrical head, like the electrical hubs. So aluminum is an alternative, uh, which has already been installed. So instead of upgrading everything to copper, they just continue to use those aluminum uh, wires that are stretched from one powerhouse to the other. <clears throat> so some of the disadvantages, like I said, we have to use a thicker wire. So it's usually 10 or 12. So I will show you some examples as well. What does that mean? But usually the copper wire, which is used in the branch circuit wiring, is 14 gauge. Uh, over here, we have to use either 12 or 10. Flickering lights, warm cover plates on switches, and receptacles. Now, these are the issues that start coming up in early 70s. When systems were overloaded, we were the, the consumer needed more power and uh, they started putting in uh, so for example this re the receptacle that we have over here it has three prongs and it has it's basically a two uh, two you can plug in two uh, things in it but uh, you you may have seen a lot of people plugging in the six uh, receptacle one which one yeah this is an extension so you use an extension you use other things so these things if it is aluminum wiring it would hot up. That can cause fire. Yes. Uh, Excuse me. What are the flickering lights? Flickering lights? Yes. Lights like flickering. Like, like on and off. So I like think. on and off. Okay. So is that because it was overheating and causing like a uh, like a break in the circuit? Yes. Of? Yeah. I'm gonna talk about that. Oh. So aluminum expands and uh, that creates a little bit of gap at the connections. So the connection is not perfect. And that's why the electricity is not flowing as fluently as it should be. And the lack of amperage caused a flicker. So that's, that's So could that technically like spark? It can cause a spark, yes. And I will show you some examples as well, what can happen. And that, that's the reason why it is not uh, a good kind of wiring to have. Okay, some of the disadvantages is uh, aluminum oxide, which is rust that develops over time and that interfere with the flow of electricity. So that is one thing that also results in flickering lights. Um, <clears throat> the two system overlap, which is joining aluminum and copper wires, that can result in a much oxidation. And obviously the connection gets poor with time and uh, uh, it, it can, again, cause fire. Uh, the electric uh, the electrolyte uh, causes uh, galvanic corrosion that results in unstable connections over time. So if you have um, an aluminum wire coming to this receptacle, for example, and this receptacle is made up of copper, so these two materials will not match. Yeah. I mean, they do, but over time there is a corrosion and that would result in the lack of uh, amperage. So for example, this is designed for 15 amps but over time, you will not get 15, you would probably get 10 or maybe less, which means that you will not get the power which is required out of it. And eventually, if you overload that receptacle, it will become uh, a hazard and can catch fire. One of the uh, solution that is done is called pigtailing, uh, but some of the people start doing using copper and aluminum, uh, which is obviously not safe to do uh, if it's not done properly. Now, this is the example that I was talking about. So this is uh, aluminum, which is silver, and this is copper, 
which is orange or brown. So this is the difference that you should see. If there is any place in the house where the firing is exposed, you would actually see if it's copper or aluminum. For us as a home inspector, that is why we open the panel and because that is where the wire is exposed when it is connected with the breakers. So that's where we see if it's a copper or, or, a, or an aluminum. Plus, uh, you would see labeling like this, aluminum wire. Uh, some of the brands that use aluminum wire is Alcan, so that's also a, an indication. Uh, these are some of the other examples. Now, coming back to your point, have a look at this. The burnt out circle. Uh, similarly here, uh, this is exactly the same thing. And that was like, it wasn't later, it was happening, it was happening a lot. This was happening a lot, yeah. yes. And that is why they stopped using aluminum wires altogether. But it still happens. I have seen this uh, with my own eyes in GDA, so it is there, it is happening. Um, some of the solutions, uh, before we go to the solutions, are we all clear why this happens? Okay. So, as a solution, some special conductors, uh, connectors were introduced. Uh, so they include the small receptacle, uh, they are marked with COAL or ALCU. Some of the larger receptacles, receptacles that are used for your kitchen or for your laundry, for example, or for the furnace or, you know, something that require more power. There were larger receptacles, 20 amp or more, and they were uh, also <clears throat> marked with ALCU. ALCU means aluminum uh, copper. So they can work with both. So they are flexible. So they can work with aluminum. They can work with copper. And they were introduced in late 70s and 70s. Yes. So when you say special connectors, you mean that joining points of copper and aluminum, or so the joining point, yes. But if you have a, a, a aluminum wire running throughout the house, but your uh, appliances that you are using, they have copper wires. Right. So there is, there is. Uh, so when you plug in the copper wire into a receptacle uh, that has aluminum um, uh, wire behind it, so there is a discrepancy here. So, so those connectors, like basically, what's that? Is it like a transformer that you plug into? The it's, it's, not, it's not like a transformer. It's more like something which is built in. Oh, it's a receptacle. It's, it's a special receptacle. Yes. Oh, okay. So like. It's good to use. This is like a special Instead of buying that one, you're buying this Correct. one. Correct. So these are, this is like a typical um, copper receptacle. The L A L C U. that's also like this, but that has a special assembly on the back side of it. So mm -hmm. that prevents fire. That's the whole point of doing that. And the reason why we do that is because it's very expensive to replace the whole aluminum wiring in the house. And an easy fix is to buy those uh, Small receptacle that small switches to replace the whole one. I know, I know, I know. But we are going to talk about that. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so some of the other things uh, are COALR. So this is a revised version. So in 80s, late 80s, they figured out that still there are issues with that um, because the material that they were using were predominantly copper mixed with zinc and some of the other materials. So it was, uh, so they scrapped that and they came up with the COELR, which is uh, aluminum alloy. So it is more compatible with aluminum uh, than other, other materials. Uh, some twist on wire connectors. So they are also called uh, wire nuts. And uh, they are usually used for pigtailing, the, the term that we used in the previous slide. So that is a solution that usually uh, electricians recommend if you have an aluminum wiring in the house. But uh, I would not go into the detail of that. It's a very technical thing to discuss. But for, for a realtor point of view, all you need to look for is any, any uh, things that are marked with this uh, sign, these signs. So if you see those, it means that there is either a cop, uh, aluminum copper combination or just the aluminum inside the house. 
it's, you know, this, this, so it's a, it, that, that, that would be a, a safer situation. Correct. Correct. And you'd be more likely to get insurance. Correct. Yes. Well, for insurance, there is there are some more requirements. Uh, I'm going to talk that in the next slide. So there are a few more requirements that you have to do that to get the insurance. Where do you see it on the switch? Like, oh, I have examples. Oh, I'll show you. Uh, another thing to look for is electrical panel. So if you are going into a house with your client, you happen to go into the basement and have a look at the panel, if it is exposed, then you can see it, it, the breakers will be marked with ALC. So that no, that in that way you know that it's an aluminum copper combination. Yeah, so those are the things that look for as a realtor. So you know. Um, so what are, what would it say if it's not a combination? Okay. If it is not a combination, if it's uh, just, just a copper, yes, yeah. copper. It, like it won't say. It anything won't say anything. Yeah. Question: Let's say we have a house and this is a combination of copper. Is it really bad? Is it or no, no. Uh, it's not that bad, but it is bad. How bad it is? I'm going to talk about that. Some of the uh, well, some of the other solutions are obviously one of the things is you have to get the ESA certificate. Um, so coming to your point, in order to get the insurance, you have to have the certificate. If you do not have an ESA certificate, the insurance company is more likely to deny your uh, insurance. The Ontario Electric Safety Code, or the code as we call it, uh, it was established and um, well, it was long established, but it has been up updated over time. And now it requires uh, every house that has aluminum wiring to have the ESA certificate. Otherwise, they will not uh, they will not pass uh, the the electric safety code. The house will not not pass. If there is a, a, a inspection from the city, it, the house will not not pass that inspection unless they do the things that are required by the code and to get the certificate. Uh, this is an uh, alloy aluminum series of wires that were introduced in uh, late 80s and early 90s, uh, and it provides better connect, uh, conductivity uh, to weight ratio, and that includes it increases the scope of uh, you know the wires that are being used here. <clears throat> yeah, so this is where you will find these labels. I know they will not be exposed, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Well, so a better, I better guess there, I guess if there's any sign of copper mixed, you can, you know, you can actually see it. You can, yeah, you can open it and yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, this is uh, the nut. The wire. They are connected here. You can see that this one is connected with these three. Uh, it's called pigtailing. Uh, it's not a very good thing to do. Uh, and if somebody does it, they have to get the the certificate, obviously, uh, but this is a quick and dirty fix to aluminum issues. Yes. Should we have access to those slides after? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. They are with uh, Mari. We can actually get them from her. Mari. Mari. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's dig into the cost. So this one is a little more expensive to replace. It's about twenty-five thousand dollars for a two thousand square feet home, and uh, well, it's not three hundred thousand. It's actually thirty thousand or more for the bigger home. It could be three hundred thousand if it's like a like a mansion or something. Sorry, that's a typo. It's a thirty thousand, <clears throat> and. Uh, one thing that you could do as, um, with aluminum wiring as opposed to knob and tube wiring is you could upgrade or maintain, plus you can get the ESA certificate and you can get the insurance. So you can live with it. Coming back to your question, uh, you asked me about it, right? So you have to fix the issues, which is you have to install the new connectors and you have to get a uh, safety inspection done and have to get the ESA certificate. So if you go into a house where 
you know that there is aluminum wiring, the first thing you should ask for is an ESA certificate. Does that have to come from an ESA? Correct, correct. So ESA, uh, there's a cost associated in, with this certification. Uh, the house will be inspected thoroughly by a, by a ESA electrician. And they would come, they would inspect it, they would take pictures, and they will give uh, a certificate saying that this house has been inspected and it is safe. Now, I have seen those certificates. Sometimes when they go in, they put that sticker on the breaker panel as well. So if you see a breaker panel with a sticker that say ESA certified, it means that it has aluminum wiring. However, it has been certified by ESA. So you have like a level of comfort uh, as opposed to going into a house with aluminum wiring and have nothing in your hands. What would the, what would the lag time be on something like that? Let's Sorry, say, what's that? What would the lag time be? Let's say you go in, there's aluminum wiring in the house. Right. Uh, you say to the seller, look, if you're going to sell this property, then we're going to have to provide a certificate. Right. How much time would we have to consider before we put the house on the market to get that time? It varies. From area to area, to area. Done that? About, I had it done in about two days. Well, as long as the electrician can come in, it takes them less than a day to do it, the whole house. And it was the process like, itself it takes less than a day, yes. Yeah. But uh, I would say to be on the safe side, let's say a week. The guys that took them less than a day to just put all the pigtails on it, mm -hmm. it was less than $1,500 with the inspection and everything for the whole house. Yeah, for the ESS certificate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the person who has the work. They do everything, yeah. Electrician, right? Yes. Electrician. They are certified electricians. And that, that, they get that as part of getting their certification allowed to do that. I've seen you know, ESA inspector vehicles yes. around. Yeah, there are quite a few ESA inspectors out there. And you can contact any of them and they will come and they will do it for you. But is any electrician? licensed electrician able to do this certificate? As long as they are a member of ESA. ESA. Okay. So they have well, we are not electricians. We are home inspectors. So I don't do this stuff. It's just education for uh, Still, if you do that, it is costly to insure. Uh, and some companies do not insure even with the certificate. So Yes, there is, a, there is some issues uh, with some companies, they would not insure, but you will still find some companies who would insure it, and you are, uh, but obviously you have to show around for that. Yep, any other questions with that? You said you had an experience with, uh, with the big tailing. Yeah, by the definition the house was aluminum. So you were able to get the insurance off that? Oh, there's no problem. There's no problem. There's no problem. So, yeah. Once they had the certificate, they had no problem. Right. Did they ask about the pigtail? Like, is Who? it the insurance company? Uh, well, the insurance company knows that if it is ESA certified, then when the house was built. Yeah, that's right. They would know when the house was built. Yeah. They yeah. would look at the gates when the house was most of the time. In those, eight, those years, the place to be all of them were aluminum. They would ask. Yeah, exactly. The late 60s and 70s. Yeah. That's the time. They were older, they didn't have it, and they were newer, they don't have it. Mm. Just that one period. So, insurance company knows. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Well, I've actually inspected some of the properties and they have been upgraded to copper wiring as well. Yeah, some are upgraded. Some are upgraded. They, were, they were built, like, you know, spray pad, kids around, all those. Yeah, yeah, so those those areas was built in 1970s, early 70s. Yeah, they yes, were, they uh, have a little wiring. Yeah, yeah, so they wiring still. But so like you say, some people upgraded. Was that? Was the house built in the 1970s? They don't have to be, but there is a possibility that they were they are they were built with aluminum wiring.
All right, so next is the summary. Um, like I said, this is an acceptable system, obviously, because you can get insurance, you can live with it. Um, but it is very costly to maintain. If something happens, you have to call in a certified electrician and they have to do a lot of stuff uh, to fix that issue. Um, loose connections and creeping, rusting. Now, these are some of the technical terms that, you know, that are associated with aluminum wiring. And all of those things can happen and they do affect the efficiency and uh, obviously they can cause fire. And that's the reason why insurance companies are reluctant to do it. Uh, CSA, uh, sorry, ESA certificate is required and uh, insurance sometimes is expensive. Now, coming back to your point, were you able to get a regular rate for insurance or was it expensive? I, you don't know. I didn't compare. Okay. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I have done some comparisons and it's usually uh, uh, on, on a yearly basis, it's about $500 to $1,000 more. So it's expensive, little expensive. Okay, any questions? Clear as well. Okay, all right, so that's pretty much about it. Um, you guys have any question about generally about home inspection or my company or myself? Yeah. Basically, how long will it take between the fire report and inspection? I didn't do an inspection the next day. Isabel, remember I told you we this, this is a big company. We have more than 32 inspectors just inside of the GTA. So if I can't do it, I would have somebody do it for you. Shoot me an email or give me a call. Do you go by like square footage? Correct, yes. So there's a, there's a guideline policy that we have to follow from, uh, from the company, but uh, there's a variation depending on the area. If you are asking me to go and do an inspection in uh, Huntsville or in Muskoka or somewhere there. Obviously, you have to charge extra for that. So, what's your boundaries? Like this brand There's no boundary. I can do inspection anywhere in North America. No, but I mean, like, if I ask you to come, I have a house for sale in Brampton. Okay. If I ask you to come there, is there a surcharge because it's not the GDA? No, inside the GDA. Well, Brampton is a GDA. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's say it yeah. So yeah, inside the GTA there is no there's no extra oh, charge. Yeah. But if I have to go extra, obviously you have to pay for oh, the, yeah. the time yeah. and you know, yeah. the commute. Yeah. So but sometimes uh, some of the reactors that I'm working with um, even from this office and one of them sent me to Hamilton. So I did it for him because they gave me like ten inspections a month. So, you know, yeah. Okay, all right, so that's pretty much about it. Uh